Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Way Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I will talk about the white site in Jurong Lake District. As reported with the business terms, this site was not awarded because the bid at 640 per square feet per property ratio was deemed too low. When you have a low offer, how to award, right? In today's discussion, I will share more about this Jurong Lake District master developer site concept. I'm also going to analyze why the offer was so low. Plus, going forward, what the authority should do to make this site more sellable. After all, government land sale program are to sell land right and help to rejuvenate the area. If land parcels are constantly not awarded, then something is not right here. Do you agree with me? Without further ado, let's dive deeper into the discussion. As mentioned in URA press release, the 6.5 hectares white site at Jurong Lake District or JLD was launched for sale as a master developer site on 22nd of June 2023 to kickstart the next phase of development in JLD as Singapore's largest business district outside the city centre. This master developer site will help cater to the demand for office, private residential and complementary space in the medium term. The site comprised three plots of land linking the existing commercial centre at Jurong East MRT Station to the future Jurong Lake District Station of the Cross Island Line in the new precinct. The new mixed-use development on the site are ambitious to be progressively developed over the next 10 to 15 years and be well integrated with public space and amenities to provide a distinctive and inclusive environment to serve the needs of communities, businesses as well as the general public. The master developer is required to comprehensively master plan the entire site to integrate the various use and coordinate the implementation of the development. With more flexibility in proposed use, the expanded JLD allow companies to experiment with new development concepts and innovative ways to integrate live, work and play in a green and car lead piscine. In line with the larger sustainability objective for JLD, the master developer is to adopt district-level urban solutions such as district coding system and district pneumatic waste conveyancing system. This system allows for more efficient delivery of urban services in the supply of chill water and management of waste disposal at the district level. They will also help to shape JLD into a model sustainable district with new developments to achieve net zero emission around 2045 earlier than the national target of 2050. Okay, so much about the JLD and its requirement. Let's go into the tender. This tender is not based on price itself, which I think is a good approach. This is because our land sales system has been progressed to a more mature era, whereby the authority will consider the proposal first before looking into the tender price themselves. Tenderers are required to submit their concept proposal and tender price separately. The concept proposal will first be evaluated by a concept evaluation committee against a set of criteria specified in the tender. This is followed by shortlisting a concept proposal that is aligned with the vision for the JLD. Only compelling concept proposals that are shortlisted will proceed to the second stage, which will be based on price only. The tender for the JLD site closed on 26 March 2024 with a sole tenderer submitted two concept proposals. The tenderers are Heavyweight Consortium comprised of five major players Capitaland Development, City Development Limited, Fraser Property, Mitsubishi Estate, and Misu Fodosa. After evaluating both concept proposals, one of the proposals was thereafter shortlisted. However, the tender has not been awarded as the shortlisted concept at the tender price of 6,888 per square meter of GFA or 640 per square feet per power ratio. This was assessed to be too low. Here, I really feel for the architects and consultants who spend hours going through their design. In the end, the developer bids are just off the mark. At this point, I can't stop wondering what went wrong in the latest GLS tender. Why is this site not awarded? This is after another two GRI sites they are not awarded to this year. In February this year, URA reject a 984 per square feet per property ratio bid by Guacoland Lab Consortium for Marina Garden Crescent GLA site. This one doesn't need to say, 
this is land to land bit rate. UI has every right to reject it. Then another side in Upper Thompson Road with a long-term service apartment component that did not receive any bid. This place, or some call it Niao Pu Sen Tan. This means the chicken cannot lay the egg. When a chicken cannot lay egg, this means this chow go there long term stay for what? People want to stay short term. If want to stay short term, most will go to city area or even Geylang Day. Go Upper Thompson for what? Correct? On this part, by right, there are a lot of technical staff that are involved. It's not so straightforward. But for most of you, I will explain it in simple layman terms. Since the land bid of 640 per square feet per power ratio was deemed to be too low and was rejected. Let me put things into perspective for you. Let me cross-reference some recent land sales. Back in 2022, Lakeside Apartment in Jurong was sold to Wing Thai Holding for 273.9 million. Wing Thai subsequently built Lake Garden Resident in its place. The land rate worked out to be 1250 per square feet per power ratio. Also in 2022, when the manager of Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust announced the sales of his 340 million disposal of JQ, a mall located in Jurong Gateway, to Capital Land Group, this worked out to be 1355 per square feet without factoring in the lease top up. If we add that in, the land cost surely will be higher. Let me use another recent GLS site that was sold in April 2024. This prime site in Zion Road in the River Valley area was sold for 1202 PSF for the residential site with commercial at the first story. This land was sold for 1.1 billion. This means the 640 per square feet per plot ratio bid seems to be a huge discount to the above tree site. This is technically half price to the Zion Road site. Real or not, did I see it wrongly? Hold on, you will not be wise to calculate this way. This is because the JLD site comprised of three sites with a maximum gross floor area of 365,000 square meter. Under the condition, at least 146,000 square meter need to be used for office use. A maximum 166,000 square meter is set aside for residential use. And the remaining 53,000 square meter for addition, office, shop, entertainment, hotel, and other use. If I dissect it, the office component comprise 40% of the total GFA. The residence component comprise another 45%. This means the remaining 15% is likely for retail or hotel use. A simple rule of thumb, office and retail space PSF is value are usually higher than residential component. Personally, I think the developer have a too conservative approach. Based on my back order envelope calculation, the land rate should be around 1000 per square feet per port ratio. At this land rate, I'm pretty sure this development will be profitable with sufficient buffer. If based on my land rate of 1,000 per square feet per port ratio, this means this JLD site will cost 3.9 billion. This is only the land cost itself. We haven't even talked about the total gross development value. This is also too risky for most developers. That is why the bidders bring in partners to fund the project together as well as to take in the risk. As for the low turnout by other bidders, one reason could be due to the stringent condition as set out in the concept and price evaluation criteria. This means only a handful of developers will qualify. From a land sale approach, the authority should just separate the three sites. Plot 1, which is furthest from the MRT station, should just become another hotel site. This is to complement the existing Genting Hotel Jurong. The land itself is also very strange. Why is that extra long nose sticking out? How to design a building like that? On my side visit, this is a road leading to Genting Hotel. I'm very puzzled. Anyway, this land measure 37,232 square meter. I think it is too huge. And this side of the road, which is relatively still undeveloped. It's a little neither here nor there. Anyway, it should be cut out into smaller bite size. Then, what about plot 2? Obviously, J Cube no more already. Now it's called Jaden Condo. So it makes sense to have a condo here. The land itself measures 16,284 square meter. This means it can be redeveloped into a condominium with 800 units. Level 1 and level 2 can be converted into retail use. This means the residents are indeed living in a mixed development. Otherwise, how to sell more than 2,500 per square feet? Please, Hall, don't build half past six mixed development, then sell as integrated development. 
Singaporean are all very smart one. What about Block 3? The remaining GFA should be used to build an office tower fronting the noisy MRT tracks. The rest of the floor area can be used for retail. This is similar to the integrated transport hub at Jurong East, undertaken by the Ministry of Transport and the LTA. This is an integrated transport hub with a fully conditioned bus interchange that is linked to MRT station and adjoining commercial development such as shopping malls. It will feature a 27-storey block connected by Skybridge to another 8-storey block. The two blocks will house office, retail space and other public facilities such as People Association, Community Club and Active SG Sport Facility. Will I see another gym here? This will surely benefit residents staying in Jurong. Personally, the three plots should be tendered out separately with condition by the successful bidder to link their property with one another through sky bridges. I'm very sure this proposal will reduce developer risk and reduce the cash outlay they require. Sometimes, in land sales, don't complicate matter. Conditions should be simplified. Property developers are businessmen. They want to see certainty. Likewise, they also want to turn around the project quickly to recover their profit. 10 years? Sorry, it's too long. Going forward, the Jurong Lake District is a very exciting place to be. You have the Jurong Regional Line to the remaking of the Jurong Lake with the newly opened Chinese and Japanese Garden. For those that have yet to come down to visit it, I urge you to come down to see the beautiful scenery. As for the next winning bidder, they could stand the chance to rejuvenate and play a role in the remaking of the Jurong Lake District. There are tons of money to make. Jam and Westgate have already said it all. With that, I hope you've enjoyed this sharing on land sales. I hope I value add the industry with my humble sharing. That's all. See you around.